Okay, now let's look at exercise B. Build your vocabulary. Read the dictionary entry. How many definitions are there? So uh, this word um, is impact, impact, and you can see uh, it's a noun. Um, and then there are two definitions. The first definition is force, and the second definition is effect. So uh, if you look that word up in a dictionary, you'll see those two definitions and probably more. Um, but go ahead and look at uh, the other words um, in number two. It says find the words in the story, underline the sentence, Determine the part of speech and write it next to the word. Use a dictionary to find the definition that fits the reading. So if you look at impact, which uh, is the word we discussed in number one, uh, we can see that it is part of the title, the impact of technology. Okay, uh, so in this case, impact is used as a noun and the definition that fits the context of the article is the second definition, effect, uh, like in a type of influence. Okay, so um, the effect of technology or the influence of technology, but force would not fit in this case. Uh, so you can see some other words, commute, source, average, classified, and application. Uh, so go ahead and take some time to uh, complete this section and then we will look at it together. Okay, now uh, let me make a note about number one. Um, impact is used as a noun in the title, but impact can also be a verb. Uh, so for example, um, even in this question, uh, in exercise one, it says, how has technology impacted the way we communicate with others? So in this case, um, impacted is um, actually a past participle form of the verb, uh, but um, it, it can be used as both a verb and a noun. So keep in mind the context that you see that word in. Okay, so number two, commute. Uh, we can see that it says, in the 20th century, many people began to commute between home and work, okay? So um, I'm not going to mention all of the different meanings uh, that you found in the dictionary, but I'm just going to mention the uh, definitions or the meanings uh, that fit this article. So number two, Commute is a verb, and it means uh, the way in which you travel uh, to work, okay? Uh, from home to work or from work to home, um, okay? And then uh, number three, source, you can find it uh, in uh, the third paragraph. Newspapers were once people's primary source for the news. Uh, so source is a noun, and it means um, somewhere you get something like the mountain is the source of the water okay so you're saying uh, that the mountain is where the water comes from so uh, it's where something uh, comes from or where you get something okay number four average uh, so uh, you can see that in the first statistic so 72 percent of americans reported that they read a newspaper or that they read a newspaper on an average day so average in this case is an adjective and it means on a normal day or a given day like just a, a, a typical day okay number five classified you can find that um, at the bottom of the first column so you can see that uh, it says people used to look for job openings in the classified ads of a newspaper so in this case classified is an adjective and it means categorized or arranged in a certain way. Okay, and then number six, application. Application can be found uh, at the top of the next column. So then they would mail an application through the U.S. Postal Service. Okay, so an application, you probably already know this. Well, first of all, it's a noun. The I-O-N or T-I-O-N ending is a big hint. And then um, an application is a document uh, through which you apply for something. Okay, so we are going to skip exercise C for now. Uh, we're gonna come back to that later, uh, but now we're going to do a listening activity. Um, so this article that you are going to hear is from your workbook, but as I mentioned before, I don't want you to open your workbook. Just practice listening and take notes, and then I'll ask some questions afterwards. Hi, Misha. 
I think I found an answer for your phone problem. You said you had outrageous phone bills because of your calls to your friends in your native country. Do you know about internet telephoning? I just tried it, and it's amazing. Instead of a phone, you use your computer to make phone calls through the internet. Best of all, it's free. My brother showed me how it works. First, you go to a special website and sign up. I got a username and a password. Your friend has to sign up too. Then you need headphones to listen to the call and a microphone to speak into. Luckily, I already had both of those. To make a call, you type in your friend's username. Your friend sees a special symbol on his computer screen, and then you can start talking. You can talk as long as you want. At the end of the call, you just close the website. Last night, I talked to my cousin in Seoul for more than an hour, and it didn't cost anything. I had so much fun. Next week, it's my aunt's birthday, so I'm going to call her. I'll talk to all my relatives there, and we can have a virtual birthday party. You should try it too. The cost is very reasonable. You can buy a microphone and headphones for $20, and after that, all your calls are free. My brother says that internet telephoning is very popular in a lot of countries now. If you want, I'll come over to your house to help you with it. See you in class. Jai soon. Okay, so let me ask the first question. Uh, who is the email from? Who is the email from? Now, I know you can't see that it's an email, but you can probably guess uh, who the email is from uh, because of the greeting and the ending. Um, so, uh, the answer should be the email is from Jason or Jason, okay? Okay, so the second question, who is the email for? Or who is the email to? Both of those questions are fine. Who is the email for? Okay, so we can say the email is for Misha. Okay, the email is for or the email is to Misha. Okay, and then what is the email about? What is the email about? Okay, you could say the email is about internet calling or inter internet phone calling or internet telephoning or uh, the email is about Misha's phone problem or the email is about a solution for Misha's phone problem. Okay, uh, so now I want you to open your workbook to page 72. Workbook page 72. Okay, so you will see uh, the email that you just listened to and um, I want you to take a look at the statements at the bottom. So these are some steps uh, for how to uh, make an internet phone call. Okay, so you can read the email one more time if you need to and then uh, put the uh, steps in the correct order. Okay, so the first step is to go to an internet telephoning website. Okay, um, and the second step is to get a username and password. The third step is to get headphones and a microphone. The fourth step is to type your friend's username. The fifth step is to talk to your friend. And the sixth step is to close the website. Okay, so um, I'm sure many of you use internet phone calling uh, to talk to people in your country, your family members, your friends. Um, and these days, you don't even need headphones and a microphone 
if you're using your cell phone. You can use your cell phone uh, when uh, it's on when it's connected to Wi-Fi, um, and then you can just talk directly into your phone. Uh, so even through WhatsApp, you can make internet phone calls. And I've actually talked to some of you through WhatsApp or Kakao or Line. Um, so many different um, apps you can use to call for free now. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on to page 73, exercise 2. Write F for fact or O for opinion. Use the information from exercise 1. So if you look at number 1, it says... Uh, Misha's phone bills are outrageous. So outrageous is uh, another way of saying um, they are too much or they're crazy. So it's an opinion clearly so we can uh, put an O. And then number two, you use your computer to make calls over the internet. Now this is not an opinion because it's not about what you believe or feel. It's just fact. So we can write F. Okay, and we're going to do the rest of these together uh, because they're pretty easy. Um, so just uh, write O or F after I read the sentences. So number three, internet telephoning is amazing. Yeah, so this one is an opinion uh, because some people might not think it's amazing. Okay, and then number four, uh, you need headphones to listen to the call. Yes, you need headphones or earphones. Um, or some way to listen or hear the call. So uh, that's an F. That is fact. Number five, the cost of a microphone and headphones is very reasonable. Okay. This one is an opinion. Whenever you, you, you see words uh, that are adjectives like amazing, reasonable, funny, um, difficult, uh, those are words that um, show that it's an opinion. Now, of course, many people may feel the same way, but uh, it's not a fact that can be proven. Okay, number six. A microphone and headphones cost $20. Now, this can be proven. You can go to the store and look at the price tag and it is clear. Nobody can say, hmm, that doesn't look like 20, that looks like uh, 18. So, of course, it's not something you can argue about. It's clearly $20 on the price tag. So that is a fact, okay? And then number seven, you have to create a username and password, okay? And this is also a fact. Yeah, you can't argue against using a, a username and password. It's just a, clearly part of the step. So, fact. Number eight, it is easy to call people on the internet. Okay, and that word easy is a big hint. Okay, so this is an opinion. All right, exercise three. Circle the correct words. We're gonna do this together as well. So uh, as I read, I'm gonna pause um, at certain moments and I want you to circle the correct word or phrase. So number one, my phone bill last month was so high because I made a lot of calls. And you can see that one's already done. Number two, I think video chat is amazing. I really enjoy it. Enjoy it. Number three, the price of this laptop computer is very reasonable. It's not expensive. Yeah, reasonable means that it's not expensive. Okay, number four, Jenny was in a car accident a few months ago. Luckily, she wasn't hurt. Okay, yeah, luckily she wasn't hurt. Number five, if something is popular, many people like it. Okay, and then number six, a virtual meeting happens online. Yes, and I'm sure many of you have been uh, meeting online through Zoom or Skype or Google Hangouts, especially these days because of the coronavirus. Okay. Finally, exercise number four, complete the sentences. Uh, so number one, my new computer is amazing. It's so small and it weighs just a few pounds. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some time to finish numbers two through six and use the words in the box. Okay, number two, smartphones are very popular now. Most people have them. 
Number three, we had a surprise quiz in class. Luckily, I studied a lot the night before, so I was ready for it. Number four, I think the price of gasoline now is outrageous. It's getting more expensive every day. Number five, Pilar made an internet phone call and had a virtual party with all, her, all of her relatives in Spain. And number six, cell phones used to be very expensive, but they are much more reasonable now. You can get one for a good price. Okay, so we are going to go back to our student's book on page 77. Student's book, page 77. Okay, so let's look at exercise C uh, on page 77. Number one, what technological change has most impacted your life? How has it affected you? Number two, do you think paying for goods and services with smartphones is a good idea? Why or why not? Number three, recently companies have been developing and testing driverless cars. If they become popular, how do you think that will impact jobs? Okay, so uh, I want you to answer these questions uh, for homework and email them to me. You can just write a few sentences for each question. Okay, that is the end of our lesson and I will see you next time.